Hello friends, this video on conservation of plants and animals part 5 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now the question is, when deforestation occurs, we saw that there are many harmful effects. So who are the main victims of deforestation? So when we cut down forests, so it definitely affects the entire environment. Now when the environment gets affected, all the living organisms get impacted, including human beings. But who are the primary victims of deforestation? Who are directly getting affected by deforestation? So forests are the primary target of deforestation. Now, nobody comes to your garden to cut down all the trees, right? Because your garden is just a small area. It will not make much difference cutting that much, those plants. But if you cut down an entire forest, you get that entire stretch of big land. And that big piece of land can be used for many purposes, like for agriculture or for industry setup or for residential setup. So forests are the main targets of deforestation. So when we cut down trees in forests, who get affected primarily? Those who live in forests, that is plants and animals. So they are the primary victims because they are getting impacted directly. Like the impact for other human beings and other animals who are living outside the forest, the impact is indirect because cutting down forest will um, negatively impact the environment and when the environment gets impacted, we also get impacted. So that is there, but that is like indirect impact. But the primary impact or the direct impact is on the plants and animals who are living in that forest. So what should we do? We should do something to protect these plants and animals. Yes, of course, we should do something. Because these plants and animals, when we cut down a big forest, so the bigger the forest is, the larger number of animals live in that forest. So if we are cutting down a very big forest, we are actually impacting larger number of plants and animals. Now the question is, what should we do? What can be done to protect these plants and animals present in the forest? That is why we are learning this chapter that how can we save the plants and animals living in forests from the clutches of deforestation? So how exactly do we conserve biodiversity? So let us now see how can we conserve biodiversity. So here we are going to talk about the various methods and processes which can help us to protect plants and animals. So there are two approaches which are followed to conserve biodiversity. So one approach is in situ conservation. What do we mean by in situ? C2 is referred to site, in site. So that means at the same location. So that is in C2. And the next approach is X C2. X means in means internal, X means external or exterior. So in C2 will always mean on-site conservation. That means within the site. That means wherever the organism exists, in its natural habitat only, we conserve the animal. So that is in C2 conservation. And ex situ means off-site conservation. So we take out the animals from its natural habitat and then we protect it or conserve it in some other location. So that is ex situ or off-site conservation. So these are two techniques to conserve biodiversity. Now in each of these techniques, there are various methods by which different plants and animals are conserved. So let us first look at the in situ conservation. So how do we conserve animals on site? So this is on-site conservation, protecting an endangered species in its natural habitat. So that is why it is called on-site. That means where the nat uh, animal naturally exists, we try to protect it there only. We do not uh, relocate or we do not transfer the animals. Let them be there. We try to protect that entire area so that there is no harm is caused to the animals, no harm is caused to that particular area. So that particular area is called as a protected area. So this becomes a protected area. 
So there are lots of restrictions within this area like uh, human beings are not allowed to cut down to the trees within that area. They are not allowed to hunt animals. They are not supposed to kill any sort of uh, animals whether it is a big animal or a small animal. So they are not supposed to uh, hunt or poach animals. So there are a lot of restrictions within this protected area and in that way we are able to protect the endangered species. What do we mean by endangered species? Those species which are in decreasing in their number very fast. For example, if you talk about human beings, there are billions and billions of human beings existing on this earth. So the risk of human extinction is less because so many people are already existing and a lot of them will reproduce and produce new human beings. So that means the chances of the species, species becoming lost forever is very less. But there are certain animals, for example, if you talk about the Bengal tiger, so the number of tigers are gradually decreasing. In fact, the, the number has decreased so much that in India, there are just a couple of tigers left over. So some handful of tigers left over and the chances of protecting them is that those tigers reproduce and give birth to new ones. But once these couple handful of tigers are also gone, so it will become an extinct species. So we are not going to have them again. So these kind of species which are very fast reducing in number and are quite near to extinction, they are called endangered species. So especially for these kind of species, we try hard to protect and conserve them. So for that purpose, these areas are protected so that they can be protected against the predators. And not only protecting the animals from being eaten over or being attacked by some other animal, the entire habitat is also protected. So that the climate under which the organism lives is suitable for its survival. So if you talk about India, in India there are more than 600 protected areas which are present. Now what are these protected areas? In terms of protected areas, there are national parks, there are animal sanctuaries, there are biosphere reserves. So they are all uh, examples where in situ conservation approach is being followed. So we will talk about each of these in detail a little later. So first let us try to understand what is ex situ conservation that is off-site conservation. So in this case, the animal is translocated to some other place and not, it, not in its natural habitat. So we try to protect the species outside its natural habitat. So we take the animal out of that particular area where it naturally lives. So examples, one of the best example that you can relate to is the zoo. You would have seen there are so many animals which are present in cages in a zoo. So what happens in a zoo is zoo is not the natural habitat. It is just an artificial environment which has been created so that the animal gets the food it needs. But at the same time, the animal is captivated. The animal is captured within a small area. And that's how the cat animal is uh, made to survive. The animal is made to breed and give birth to new animals. So that's how they are being protected but that is not their natural habitat. So that is called off-site or ex situ conservation. So examples are zoo for animals, botanical garden for plants. So if you, have, if you have ever been to botanical garden, so you would have seen that there are many different unique varieties of plants present in a botanical garden. So, so that garden is also artificially maintained and appropriate conditions are being provided for the uh, sustenance of each of those plants. Aquarium, so if you see an aquarium, it, it is quite a small uh, thing, but appropriate environment is being provided so that the fishes are able to survive in that aquarium. In fact, there are many unique and different fishes which are present in the aquarium and that's how they can survive. So these are some of the examples where ex situ conservation approaches followed. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.